This meeting is being recorded. Well, welcome. This is Edna White. I am your host today on Keeping It Real. And I'm very excited to have a very um, esteemed writer, I will say. Miss, and I want to say it wrong because I always, my audience always knows I kind of mess up the names, but I get it right the next time around. Dr. Carrie Jaron Sicky. Yeah? No. Close. Close. <laughs> okay. Because really, okay, you no can one can say this. <laughs> okay. Okay, I feel really, really great this time. I feel really good this time. So, how do you say your last name? Yeah, it's Jarozinski. So, yeah. Jarozinski. Yeah, Jarozinski. I should have asked you the pronunciation earlier. I should have said that. But we were we were talking pre-show and we're having a really great time. So I don't want to disturb that. Yeah. But yes, um, thank you, Dr. Carrie, for being here today. Welcome to Keeping It Real. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited. Great. And I just wanted to um, ask you, how do you show up in this world? This is, how do you show up? That is a really great question. I have to say, so I've been doing some of these podcasts for um, my book and and the the leading questions sometimes are like, wow, I wish I would have thought about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, I wish I would have had that question before I jumped on. Um, you know, I just, I, this is how I like to show up in this world. And I hope okay. that this is how those who know me would describe me. Um, but I just, I try to be a very joyous person. Um, I mm-hmm. am someone who uh, is seeking contentment at all times, which is okay. it's really difficult for me to find contentment. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's really yeah. hard for me because sure. I'm a goal oriented person. So I'm always striving to like, what's the next thing? Like, what can I work on next? And I, I really have to be intentional about just centering and being appreciative and grateful for this moment and this breath and, you know, right. what, what I'm doing right now. So I am, I am a joyful person that is consistently seeking contentment. Oh, I like that. I like that. That's very good. Very good. It's almost like your assignment. So everything is always, you know, figuring it out and just adding that little joy in there. That's great. Yeah, I like that. A lot. Absolutely. So let's talk about um let's talk about your book, Reclaim Your Story, because I know a lot of my audiences, I always talk about the power of their story, you know, and your story is real, you know, you and not to be challenged that you're sh- you should you know, put your story away because, you know, it's it's past or whatever it is, but talk about reclaiming your story. Yeah. So um, this has a couple of different meanings to me. So I do share a lot of my personal experiences um, as it applies to seeking wellness and seeking health in my life. And so part Mm -hmm. of of this reclaiming your story is really reclaiming my story because I had let a lot of things sort of take hold in my life, like fear and panic and anxiety. And as and, we do, as all of us, all of us do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and so in writing this book, I really wanted to demonstrate the power of me taking back that control in my life. Mm -hmm. And instead of calling myself an anxious person, I'm a person that maybe suffers from anxiety every now and then, right? So that's part of Mm -hmm. that reclaiming your story. That's not who I am. It may be a characteristic of me at some point in Mm -hmm. my life, but it's not who who I am and it's not who defines me. So really yeah. reclaiming my story in that and and really this power of uh, self-determination. So I am mm. the one that sets the goals in my life and I am the right. one that goes in and seeks those goals and, and, and creates actionable steps towards those goals. So right. I'm not going to sit back and say, oh, it's my genetics or, oh, it's fate. Um, <laughs> you know, I'm really going to take back yes, that we do. power <laughs> of my own mm-hmm. story right yeah. and and in doing so i share my personal stories with everyone else so that in turn they can take back their story as well mm-hmm. and i love i love the theme of storytelling just like you said it's so powerful it's mm-hmm. really it meaningful is. 
meaningful and personal. It is. Um, yeah. And it's, it's this story that we are continuously telling ourselves in our own minds of what we can or cannot do. And it's an, that moment of awakening when we really uh, listen to what that story mm -hmm. is that we're telling ourselves is when we can regain that power. So most often Absolutely. we have this running mantra in our head and a lot of times it's mundane things. It's, I have to pick up the kids. I have to do the dishes. Yeah. I have to get to the grocery yeah. store. Don't forget yeah. the tortilla chips, that kind of stuff, right? Yeah, yep, um, exactly. A yeah. list, a running list. Yeah, and it's like before <laughs> our, our feet even hit the ground in the morning, we start doing these things. And we also, so we have sort of that running script that kind of takes over our our brain cells but we also have these scripts in our mind that are a little bit more insidious that really take intentionality to listen to and you know one of the scripts could be anxiety about what might happen in future events so mm -hmm. well if i if i go to work and i say this to this person then what mm -hmm. might happen or if mm -hmm. i you know i'm running late to pick up the kids then this might happen and we it's that constant mm -hmm. state of worry about things that haven't happened yet. And then we also have this running script of ruminating in the past of, well, he said this to me and I should have just said this. And if I would have done this, I would have been in this space in my life. And if I would have, right. you know, let that person do this, then this would have happened, right? So it's this rumination yeah. on past events. So we have the mundane things, we have the future, like worrying about those anxious, what might happen kind of things. And yeah. we have the ruminating thoughts in, right. you know, looking towards our path and sort of interwoven into all of those things is this um, self-talk about who you really are and what your story is. And it could be uh, these little microaggressions that we have against ourselves, or it could be really supportive of ourselves as well. So an example I like to use is you step out of the shower and you look in the mirror and you go, Ugh, and turn away. <laughs> this, is, this is a microaggression. This is a story you're telling yourself that you're not good yeah. enough, or you're not yeah. pretty, or you have curves in the wrong spaces or yeah. you know, like things like that, right? right? But it's with intentionality that we start awakening to these little microaggressions or these little, you know, positive supportive things that we're saying in our head. And it sure. boils back down to the, the um, premise of, you know, if you think you can do something, you're right. And if you think yeah. you can't do something, you're right. right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I often talk to my, uh, one of my favorite um, exercises for my clients is um, taking a full length mirror and taking everything off. So, mm -hmm. you know, makeup, hair, if you have it, nail polish, if you have it, and literally looking in all clothes and literally taking and, and looking at yourself fully like the man in the mirror and, um, Saying I love you from the top of your head all the way down to your toes. And then if you have some kind of like that little, I guess you said the little uh, microaggressions in your head, oh, I don't like that. But I always say, find a solution. So if I don't like this, yes. okay, I got to make a goal that um, I can get this kind of handled, you know? So mm -hmm. I'm making a goal. It looks good now, but I want to make it look better because I, you know, and you make it so that it, it, it not spirals down but spirals up and yeah. then you begin to love it so <clears throat> that's one of my favorites um my very favorite exercises and everybody always laughs at me yeah no that, I really love is. that that's absolutely fabulous really so really it's exercise. that really forcing you to look in the mirror yes. and, and <laughs> forcing you to address that inner self-talk yes. that's right so, so you can identify that but then at the right. same time how can you flip that switch how can you turn yes. that ugh, into yes. something into good a, and beautiful? And yes, positive, right? exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you talk about in the in uh, the beginning of your power of storytelling, you talk about stories, and I know I love stories, and that they can evoke uh, deep inspiration, sadness, hope for humanity, and fear of of humanity. Can you talk about that a little bit? 
Oh gosh. Yeah. You know, we are uh, us humans. We're just like these social critters and we like to share our own stories. And, you know, typically we're sharing our stories to impart knowledge or evoke emotion. And a lot of times it's both. So, yeah. you know, when we first started sharing stories, it really was, you know, making drawings on cave walls and, yeah. um, and then, you know, sitting around a fire and sharing stories of what happened to the, them during the day or, or grandma's rocking their babies, you know, to sleep at night and telling them bedtime stories. So it's sort of just ingrained in our being to impart mm -hmm. knowledge through the power of storytelling. Right. And, right. you know, it just looks a little different right now. You know, we're not mm -hmm. etching things on cave walls anymore. We're doing podcasts yeah. and we're reading <laughs> blogs. And right. Yeah. What's the, why are we reading blogs and, and listening to podcasts? Because we want to learn something or we want to invoke right. some sort of emotion to impart yeah. an action, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it's just sort of ingrained in humanity. And I think that's why we all love it so much. You know, that's why, that's why how many mm -hmm. millions of people go to the theater every year or, you know, Disney is huge, right? Because people like oh, yeah. the story. <laughs> so, yeah, they do. It's always, and <clears throat> you, know, you know, you when you get with your friends, you always ask them, so how did you guys get together? You know, you want to have the story behind it. How do you get together? You know, how did you get together? Yeah. And you always know want to hear that, that 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 story. You know, absolutely, yeah. And it's just so fun to connect that way too. I live in a small town, and I was just at a Christmas party, and I made two connections within the first, you know, thirty minutes. And my neighbor's like, "That is so central Wisconsin." Like, we all oh know my gosh. They, up they in the narrowed country. it down to central Wisconsin. Oh my goodness. Yeah, yes, it was. It was just oh perfect. But, but we were able to do that through storytelling about, you yeah, know, my yeah. years in high school and how yeah. I grew up. And yeah, it was pretty cool. That's good. And um, so I want to read um, a little excerpt from the same chapter, though. Um, it says, Your narrative is this little voice in your head that pretty mo much goes nonstop, what you just said. The voice is even more powerful than the stories in the first chapter. So what do you mean in the first chapter? Do you mean when, when you were younger? So the first chapter meaning, you know, just like the, the evolutionary, evolutionarily okay. speaking, the tales that we tell each other. But really okay. what, well, what wields the most power is this story that you tell inside your own head. And the gotcha. reason, one of the reasons why it has so much power is because most often it goes unnoticed. We do these mm. little microaggressions to ourselves nonstop yeah. without That's even true. thinking about it. And it just sort of degrades away our soul, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. chips away at our motivation. It chips away about at our joy and our um, just our, our presence of being right? In, in relationships That's with crazy. others and relationships with ourselves, it slowly just eats away at that so that we are not yeah. the best iteration of ourselves. Yeah. And that goes along with that, you know, that, that self-talk really you have to, that's the noise <clears throat> as you were think, talking, that's the noise people meditate to get out. It's not the noise of to do the, you know, I got to do the dishes, you know, that noise. It's really that self-talk noise that, the, that they're not really hearing. And then when they're silent, they hear it. And that's the noise for the meditation. That's the, the, the noise for the yoga, you know, for the creating the mantras, you know, doing some solitude time. That's really, that's really what they're, we're trying to get rid of. We're really yeah. trying to get rid of that. Absolutely. And it's sneaky, right? Like those, those yeah. insidious little thoughts, they're just sneaky in there. And, and what it does is it reinforces our core beliefs about ourselves. So, you know, right. like I was saying earlier, I'm an anxious person. No, I'm not an anxious person. I'm just a person that gets a little nervous about certain situations, but it's mm -hmm. not until you with intent sit down and start analyzing that, that you realize yeah. what your core beliefs are. And, you know, I'm, I'm an academic. I have, um, my students in one of my classes, I have them journal, do uh, quite a few mm -hmm. uh, journal exercises. And we start investigating these, 
these internal core beliefs. And it's absolutely amazing some of the things that come mm -hmm. out. Like, I am not good enough. I am not pretty. I don't deserve oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. forgiveness. Oh, yeah. I don't deserve oh, yeah. happiness. And like, those are big, huge emotion laden um, ideas and concepts, right? That until you start chipping away at that, you don't know that you have those. It's scary. And and you have to you have to chip away at them, in order to um, live this human life. You have to chip away at them. Um, right. You can't just don't... sit down for ten minutes and do this and be like, yeah. "Oh yeah, I know what this means." Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> or you can't ignore it. You can't ignore it because well, if you do, it gets to be a big problem. There you go. There you go. And it gets really, really big. It. it it starts to show itself in your body, starts to show itself in your attitude, starts to show itself in, in the way you speak. It starts, it starts just showing, it's like a kid inside of you, just like, I'm having a, a, a big temper tantrum. So it starts talking, it starts talking, right? It, yeah. it, it has no way out. And um, I love how you say, reframe, you know, now let's reframe the, the message, you know, from black and white, because that's really, White noise, you know, <laughs> it really is. And and that black and whiteness, they now it's you gotta reframe it to, to make it feel good. Yeah. You know, um, I talked to a lot of clients and then I talked to them, I said, Okay, how much money do you want to make in your business? Right. And I'll say, they'll, they'll give out this this crazy number, you know, and they're like, eh, a, a million by the end by by the end of the year. I said, um, does that feel good in you? You know, does it really feel good? And like, <laughs> no. I said, that's in that's putting yourself in a, somewhere. Maybe you're you're having some self-talk that's telling you you can't make a thousand. I said, let me tell you what I did. <clears throat> and I was testing the um my ability to manifest. And so um I was studying manifesting. And I said, well, if this is real, I'm gonna test it out. So I said, okay, um, start with something small. Every day I'm going to find a penny. And every day I found a penny, no matter where I went, got out the car, I found a penny. Got, I mean, I collected over $10 for two weeks wow. in pennies. In pennies. Okay. So I got super excited. I said, okay, these all could be coincidences because everybody throws their penny. Right? Okay. I want to see a nickel. I want to see a nickel for the next two weeks. I did that. And do you know, I saw a nickel. And of course, I'm not going to see it and not pick it up. I'm picking it up. So I'm, I, I yeah. was like, oh my gosh, this is really working. So I, I built my way up because then now I'm thinking now, okay, I, I'm at five cents. I'm only at five cents. And now the self-talk is saying to me, um... Oh, this is just happenstance. It won't happen again. So what I have to do? Well, I'm going to test it out. I'm going to test it out. I'm going to not listen to that. Test it out. Now I'm looking for dimes. Every time I got out of my car, wherever I went, there was a dime. Mm -hmm. now, you know, I may have gone somewhere three times in a day and saw a dime. But if I, you know, it would depend on when I was going out. I literally found a dime. So mm -hmm. now I'm getting brave. Now I'm getting cocky now. Like, oh, <laughs> let's do a dollar. Let's do a dollar. You know, I'm like all excited. I want to see a dollar. And so every time I literally, the dollar would be already on the ground, smushed or fly. Like, like, you know, when you open your car door, it flies yep. out, yep. literally be there. Or I go to the laundromat. One time I went to the laundromat, somebody left all their quarters, which was $1. Yep. In the long, in the slot machine. Yep. So I was like, wow. So if, if we don't, if we reframe, as you said, reframe that self-talk from black and white to colorful, like, like we want to be colorful and mm -hmm. creative, we can really make, make changes in our lives, right? Yeah, absolutely. I love that. And, and to just, um, I mean, research has demonstrated this, that yeah. if you can find some positivity in a situation, meaning like if you can use a growth mindset. So yeah. if I, if I get lost on, you know, vacation and I end up 
you know, missing my flight or, or missing my tour group or whatever. Right. Okay. That's a bad situation, right? I can choose to be angry about that, or I can say, okay, I'm angry about this. This is how anger feels. However, you know what? I was able to meet a really nice human being on the side of the road that showed me directions. And I now have (laughs) faith in humanity that there are good human beings out there that just want to help people, right? So if we can embrace this growth mindset, we know we have better health outcomes. Isn't that crazy? Like literally, if we just have that positivity mindset, we know that we're going to have better health outcomes Absolutely. as we age. So that's some, that's like an easy intervention for anybody to do, yeah. right? Just anybody, be more positive. Exactly. Find that silver so how, do you, so how do you sprinkle that, that forgiveness, like you oh. said, in the, the magic wand of forgiveness in there and all of that we're doing, how do we do that? <laughs> Yeah, you know, honestly, and I think I refer to this in the book, like I think forgiveness is the hardest, right? Not yeah. so you have this component of forgiving other people that have harmed you in your life. Um, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to make this trivial. Like there are people that have had some really super bad things happen to them. And mm-hmm. and it is almost beyond comprehension of how they are able to forgive those that have harmed them. And, you know, sometimes this just takes years and decades of therapy, right? Um, So so there's the component of forgiving those that have harmed you, but then there's also the component of forgiving yourself for what you have done to others or what Mm -hmm. you have done to yourself. So going back to that inner critic of, you know, those microaggressions or telling yourself you're not good enough or you're, you know, you're ugly or you're stupid or whatever that core critical belief is. Can you, can you get to a point where you can forgive yourself for treating yourself that way? Because yeah. let me tell you one thing, like, would you, would you say to your friend, you're ugly? No. Would you say to mm-hmm. your friend, you're stupid? No. Would you say to yeah. your friend, that was a stupid move. Why did you do that? No. But yet we can do that to ourselves all the time. Right. So like, if I were to say that to my friend, I would ask forgiveness. <laughs> For doing yep. that, right? That's move. <laughs> yeah, but after after almost like because I think that would be so insultive, you feel the daggers. <laughs> yes. Yes. It would be so, so it would be so like the daggers, like looking at you like, what are you crazy? Like, right. That I wouldn't call what, myself a what friend. Are you drinking? What are you having? What is that? Like, come on. I would not, I would not call myself a friend if I treated a person like that. So why oh, no. can we yes, treat no. ourselves that way? Why That's do, right. why is it okay for us to treat our, it's not okay to treat nope. ourselves that way. So can we get to this space where we can forgive ourselves for consistently treating ourselves mm-hmm. like that for how many X amount of years, decades, whatever. So getting yourself to that state of forgiveness, or even getting yourself to the state where you are contemplating forgiveness of yourself and yeah. others, mm-hmm. you then in turn will internally tell yourself that you are now worthy of this behavior change. You are worthy of achieving joy. You are worthy of achieving yeah. contentment. So can we get to that space where you can let go that negative energy of you know non-forgiveness and really start just opening up, being vulnerable, because these are big, scary emotions, right? Mm-hmm. being vulnerable to that because in turn, your your conscious will just be like, okay, now I know I'm worthy of, you know, going to the gym. I'm worthy of having stable, healthy relationships with my friends or with a partner or people at work. So yeah, forgiveness is probably the hardest one, but I yeah. think it's the most influential as well. Okay. That that really makes sense. Um, of course, I got more stuff. Um, letting go. This is another magical thing. Letting go of fear yeah. in the scene of your letter. Yeah, that's, that's, that's heavy. And I know when I, you know, one of the exercises I did when I was in, in therapy is um, write a letter to the person that perpetrated you. And like, I'm like, ooh, you know, and you couldn't, I, I couldn't get past. I could, I was, had a pin on the paper, but I couldn't get past, everyone's going to be mad at me. 
Oh. And it was um, it was my own it was my own paper. It's not something I was writing and putting out there. Like right. And I was like, just to write the the letter to myself. Oh. The this bad self talking. Everybody's gonna be mad at you. Everybody's oh. gonna be. So I couldn't even write it. So talk about how you know this how to add lingo of the fear. Yeah. Yeah, fear is a tough one as well. And it kind of does go hand in hand with forgiveness. So for your example, mm-hmm. I would almost take a step back and like, clearly, you weren't ready to write that letter at that moment. Um, yeah. But maybe just starting to get curious of why are you worried about letting other people down in this moment? Like, how? Mm-hmm. what does that look like? And really just getting curious about the root of why yeah. you're worried about, you know, others feeling let down instead of, you know, really um, appreciating that this is a self-healing exercise. So sort of just getting curious about that. And, and, you know, the letting go part probably would be the actual writing of that letter. But like I said, you probably weren't ready to write that letter at that moment. You maybe needed to do a little bit more self-forgiveness work or forgiveness of others. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, before you yeah. can let go. So that's again, sure. I think because I was eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. eighteen. So you know, just just being able to um, you know meet the side. I was eighteen. So yeah. Um, yeah. going I mean, to the therapist was a big jump. You yeah. Know? But just like that statement in and of itself is it, just really reflectful on uh, or reflective on how big of a heart you have. So maybe Mm -hmm. in that moment, you can say, you know what, I am really appreciative of my good quality of having a big heart and worrying about others and just start building on your own strengths, right? Mm -hmm. So just like acknowledging, I, you know, I I am a good person. I am respectful of other people's feelings. I want other people to feel good. And then maybe once you get through that, you're like, okay, but I deserve to feel good too. And right. then working on letting that go. So again, yeah. that whole forgiveness piece has to come before you can let it go. And, right. and the other thing that folks sometimes don't realize is that forgiveness is not for the other person. <laughs> like not no, at all. You're not letting them never back was. into your life. You're not letting them, you know, muddy your boundaries. That's, That's right. That's right. That's a completely separate instance. You are letting go of oh, this right. anger and this fear that you hold within your own body because it's only harming you. It's not harming yes. anyone else, it's harming you. So yeah. that's why it's important mm-hmm. to let it go. And there's there's a phrase I like mm-hmm. to use, let it go and let it be. So you know, if you're yeah. not able it's to good. let it go just yet, can we just let it be? Can we just sit here and be curious about it and figure out where it came from and just kind of chew on it a little bit until we mm-hmm. are at that point where we can let it go? Right. Yeah. yeah, that I see that that um being very important, Neil. And I didn't learn those things until later until afterwards, you know. You know, but, none um, of us do. If that's like lived yeah, experience. It takes time, you know, and I was I, I call this whole um healing from trauma or surviving through it, peeling an onion. And you always the first layer you're not gonna pe- you're not gonna cry, but then the second layer there's some tears. Third layer, you, you know, you keep going down all the way down and not until you get the small part of it is there's some sweetness in it. And you'd be like, wow, I didn't get triggered, you know, after, but you're going to have that when you peel away the skin Absolutely. The onion. You're going to have these things. Yeah. You have so, to, you have yeah. to feel it to heal it. There's another, there's yeah. another fun phrase, right? You have to feel it to heal feel it. it feel like- it and feel it. I like it. You just started the right there. Yeah. You're going to steal that. We're going to work that together. Feel it, yeah. feel it, and heal it. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's great. Dr. Carey, um, could you give um, anyone who really wants to share, like you did, your story, and, uh, you know, what, you know, what they could do to really get out there. Cause I know that a lot of self-talk is going to come up for them as well. Can you give, you know, the audience something to, to really be empowered about sharing their story? Oh yeah. Well, and, and it, this goes back to when you, when you first awaken to your story 
and then mm -hmm. share your story, you reclaim your power to that story. Right. So right. it could be something as, and I don't want to, I don't want to use the word simple, but it could be um, a small or intervention. Like you were talking about just writing a letter. It could right. literally just be writing a letter to yourself, right. forgiving yourself, letting things go, acknowledging your mm -hmm. feelings, you know, like just telling yourself people stumble, people make mistakes. This is normal. Everybody does it. I'm okay. Um, so it could just be as, as little as you're sharing your story on a piece of paper by yourself and then you crumple it up and throw it away, whatever. But you, you gave birth to those words now, right? They're, they're mm -hmm. sort of out there mm -hmm. in the world. And, and maybe next time you're not just going to write the story, but maybe you could share it with a therapist or maybe you could share it with a yeah. friend or maybe you could share it with mm -hmm. your dog because there's a mm -hmm. difference between writing the words down and saying them out yes. in the universe. There really is a mm -hmm. difference there. Mm -hmm. So really just baby steps, but you know, everybody is at a different space. So when I talk about behavior change, you know, most people are thinking about diet and exercise, diet and exercise. And that's fine yeah. if that's where you want to go. But a lot of times we need to take care of this other stuff first yeah. to make sure our other interventions, our other health interventions really are able to come to fruition. We need to set yeah. that stage to be successful yeah. because what happens is folks, will, you know, they'll go to the doctor and the doctor will be like, oh, you've got high blood pressure and you're overweight. You need to lose weight. And that's a trigger to like, oh gosh, I need to get rid of all of yeah, my weight right. power and exactly. I need to go to the gym and I need to work out six days a week. And, and maybe that's yeah. sustainable for two weeks, but it's not sustainable in the long term, right? right? So what can we do to make ourselves feel worthy of change and, and you know, looking at our diet or moving mm -hmm. more, you know, cleaning up a little things here or there? You know, what can we do in our head to really set the stage to make sure that we're successful? Because if you jump into it and then you quote unquote fail, I don't like that word, but that's what people use like fail. It feeds into this whole cycle of I can't do it. I yeah, just yeah. I quit every time I fail every mm -hmm. time. Why even bother? You know, and it get you get mm -hmm. stuck in that in that loop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm one of those ones that I do, you know, go to the doctor and I'll ask them for certain things. And, you know, like, and the minute they say diet, I was like, uh-uh. Yeah. That triggers me. That's yeah. one of my words that triggers me. Don't tell me that. Maybe if you tell me to go to the nutritionist and let's work on using what I already have as a diet, I said, please don't tell me that, you know, uh, you know what I eat, then we can talk about that. But yeah. don't ever say diet to me because then yeah. I started for two weeks and it's gone. And then that's why, I, you know, certain things in my life, I can truly say, uh, if I'm getting heavier, there's a reason why I'm getting heavier. Like, mm -hmm. so there's not, it's not usually what I'm eating. It's usually what has eaten me. All that other stuff that's floating yes, around. Yes, all yeah. that other stuff. Yeah. So if I have good. to be on the diet, it's, it's something that's eating me not what I'm eating. And that's why I got it. I always start there. I always yeah. ask myself, okay, what are you doing? Why is mm -hmm. this happening? Yeah. What's going on? I ask myself that, you know, you know, so that I can, like you said, make the stage. Yep. The stage. Yeah. Because like, if you're not sleeping well, you're going to get yeah. right, right. If you're, you know, not moving as much because you're working yes. 80 hours a week, that's yep, yep. going to have a spillover effect. I mean, yes, exactly. if you're stressed out because you're having strange relationships in your life, that's mm -hmm. the mitigating factor. So yeah, we need yeah. to, we need to get curious about all of these other things and not oh, be so hyper-focused on, because that's what our culture is hyper-focused on is right. diet and exercise. And, and we need right. to let that go right. <laughs> because when you, when you work on this other stuff, that stuff mm -hmm. will just naturally. It, it, falls, it falls into place every yeah. Time. It does. Without a doubt. Without a doubt for me. Myself something without a doubt. Everything falls into place. Yep. Last and final thing. What is your what is your definition of power? Oh, that's another good one. Um, yeah, I think uh being aware and intentional of my daily choices. I am the only one that can give me power, right? And and it is through intentionality with the choices that I make. 
that I will either mm -hmm. help or hurt myself, right? And mm -hmm. and that really, I, I think, is the true definition of power. Like, I'm not going to give external power to other people around me. Obviously, okay. I'm going to be a kind person and, you know, put joy out into the world and positivity. Right. Um, but that starts with me inside. And yeah. I have the choice to give myself the power to choose um, in ways that will help me. Or yeah. I also have the power to make the choice to um, do things that will harm me. Great. Very good. Dr. Carey, I appreciate you being here today. This is the end of our show, everyone. I know that I got a lot out of it. And I thank you, Dr. Carey, for this so great this conversation. Great. Yeah. great conversation. And we're going to look to work together soon in the future about something Absolutely. else. Absolutely. All I right. Love it. You have All a right. wonderful end of the year and a beautiful Thank new year. You too. Back at you, sister. Back Thank at you. you. Yeah. Bye for now, audience, and we'll see you real soon. Mm. Bye now. Bye-bye.